Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good uh, Sunday afternoon. March 5th, 2023 is a date. Uh, it's about 1 p.m. here along the West Coast in California. Uh, this is the Earth Master here, and I'm uh, going to do a quick update video here on the activity ramping up around the globe. Just got a uh, four-pointer coming into the Turkey area. It's going to be a 4.5 earthquake showing up uh, for an aftershock sequence there in that region. And uh, it did show up actually pretty nicely on the seismograph station around the Turkey area, which is right here. Notice that uh, four-pointer coming in as we speak. Rest of the seismos look fairly quiet. Uh, maybe a little activity around Japan and the Dinsmore, California area. All right, uh, around New Zealand, some movement taking place here. Mostly some smaller microquakes uh, around the Taupo supervolcano. Uh, within the last hour, a couple small quakes. Uh, looks like the largest so far, 2.6, at least as far as the hour goes. We did see some prior movement uh, yesterday, kind of ramping up around the Taupo Super Volcano, including a 4.4, and a 3.1, and a 2.6 around that region as well. A glance at the volcano drums here from the geonet.org.new Zealand site. Shows the volcanic drums here across the area of New Zealand, specifically around Taupo Super Volcano. Here's some of that activity ramping up within the last hour. But notice that uh, for the most part, overnight, since the activity yesterday, it's been relatively quiet. But uh, getting a little spitter spatter of some activity spinning up right now around the Taupo Super Volcano. Nothing major. It uh, doesn't look like it's turning into any major swarm there at the uh, New Zealand volcano, but uh, keeping an eye on it. All right, uh, earthquake activity. Uh, 5.4 also coming in here to the Philippines. That may have been the signature that we've seen there on the Japan station. Just a little, little bitty blip of a uh, signature. Sometimes, uh, yeah, I'd definitely say that could be picked up there from that distance. Japan to uh, Philippines with a 5.4. This one, uh, 10 kilometers deep. Uh, also earlier this morning, we did see a 4.9 into the Tonga area. Back building over here into the trench, 256 kilometers deep uh, for that area. So notice the back and kind of the back and forth uh, activity taking place here. Getting some deeper movement here around the Tonga trench and uh, scooting that westward plate movement here the general plate movement heads along this plate boundary towards the northwest and that's where we're seeing the activity here today so look at the globe let me see what we have here i know we got turkey ramping up looks like things are uh, really kicking up there today in the earthquake department uh, a couple fours including the one that just came in and some twos in there but notice uh, we're starting to get that uh, movement back out here around the uh, the Philippines once again there's quite a few threes and some other fours showing up here USGS only showing a slight amount uh, most of the activity is confined to this area here uh, now notice on the globe it's got quite a bit more than four earthquakes that the USGS is showing there's a, a pretty good cluster of earthquakes in this area including that 5.3 uh, these guys USGS showing a 5.4 surprisingly so we'll keep an eye on this area uh, with this general movement bouncing back and forth here today. Uh, keep an eye on the areas around the Java Trench north where this really haven't seen any tremendous uh, activity throughout this region here. And I think it does play a part as what's going on as to what's going on over here around Turkey and the uh, areas around the Middle East, Eastern Afghanistan. Uh, all been seeing a, obviously a little bit of uptick here over the past month or so. While this specific area continues to build up strain but we have not seen any sufficient activity in quite a while around the uh, northern end of the java trench northward here uh, so kind of watching this here for some larger scale movement that is the uh, kuro kamchaka trench here um, north of japan still very quiet nothing showing up there from the usgs nor the emsc model <clears throat> that's going to be this section right here Notice the absence of earthquake activity. It's been like that for a little while, folks. Uh, let me make sure the bells are off. Looks like they are. I, <laughs> I hate when I make that mistake. I'll leave the bells on. Uh, and, of course, I have it muted here on my end. But uh, for you guys, you got bells mixing in with uh, my voice. 
All right, uh, what do we got here? Alaska. See a little bit of activity across the region of the Cook Inlet area today, it looks like, including a 2.9 Pedro Bay, Alaska. 127 kilometers deep, goodness. Uh, that is deep in this area for that 2.9. All right, West Coast activity. Uh, we got some more rain coming in out here right now. Um, and chance of thunderstorms, but we did have a 2.8 here across the area of Stony Gorge Reservoir. I know exactly where that's at. It sits right up against the foothills here. Uh, there is a fault system that runs through the west side of the valley all the way down across the valley called the Great uh, Valley Thrust Zone. Uh, it's kind of an ancient fault, but it's still active. But uh, this earthquake here, relatively shallow, at 4.5 kilometers deep for that 2.8. The lake itself sits right here, along with some uh, some other lakes. Now, with all this rainfall, all this snowfall coming up, uh, and we're going to talk about the potential of melting snow here, um, probably towards the middle of March. We'll, we'll go over the weather here in just a minute. But i uh, got to remember all this rainfall and snowfall out here. Uh, lubricating, so to speak, these fault systems out here that maybe haven't seen any movement in a while. So we got to watch that. It does take a little while for the uh, moisture to soak into the ground. Sometimes months, um, you know, it takes a little while to soak down there. But there's been quite a bit uh, that we, we, we've received out here along the West Coast. So we'll watch these faults, see how it plays out for California. Right now, just a little bit of odd earthquake activity across the northern california region and we've seen that uh we've seen a well i think it's been maybe over a week now let me see here Let's see if it's been on the 30-day map well it looks like we're missing out on a couple earthquakes here but there has been some stretching across the sacramento valley from about chico southwestward here um around lake pillsbury there's that one today because where we had a little bit more activity here but looks like maybe they removed those so we'll keep an eye on things. Uh, the rest of California down south here got uh, a little bit of specific swarming in the confined area near the Park Hill area uh, near San Jacinto. What's going on down there, guys? This is uh, occurring roughly about 13 kilometers deep. Fairly consistent depth with the earthquakes there. Um, see what we got for any main magnitudes. Doesn't look like we've seen any main magnitude um in this area so uh see that is just on the uh, it looks like it's just off one of the portions here one of the segments of the san jacinto fault zone so kind of watch that keep an eye on that southern california the san andreas fault here relatively quiet nothing showing up on it for now but we'll continue to watch that they've gotten a lot of rain out here and snow up in the mountains San Bernardino Mountains getting a lot, and there's going to be a lot more coming up, too. So 2.5 map and above here just shows that one outside of the Stony Gorge Reservoir and a 2.5 on the Pinnacles area. All other quakes, microquake. Uh, let's see, one earthquake down into the Gulf of California along this... Um, oh, there's a couple different zigzag fracture zones out here. 4.5, 10 kilometers deep rest of the country looks pretty quiet some earthquake activity here from yesterday nothing really new to report today for the rest of the states down here in puerto rico did have a 3.4 coming in a little bit closer this time to the puerto rico trench 20 kilometers deep i've been seeing a little swarm of activity out here recently in that area keep an eye on that south america region one 5.1 coming in Oh, a couple hours ago into the Peru Chile Trench. Let's see what we got here for. Uh, now, notice that. What do we got coming in here? There's a 4.0 <clears throat> a little bit further up into the Gulf of California. Um, I believe that's an EMSC reporting that. Let me see when that was. 10:53 uh, a.m. my time. So it looks like we did see some older movement down south here. 4.5. This morning about six o'clock and then a couple hours later uh, some northward plate movement here to south of southern california 
4.0. So kind of, kind of watch that area. I know USGS is not showing that, but uh, with that type of activity, got to watch the Southern Cal region kind of migrating a little bit northward. All right, but for the Peru area in Chile, uh, did have a 5.2 as noted and uh, some smaller quakes as well in the mix. It looks like USGS reporting that uh, as a 5.1 little downgrade there on their uh, on their end. <clears throat> All right, uh, across the Pacific, there's a 3.3 it looks like down into South Island, New Zealand. Um, the smaller quakes, of course, will not show up here on the map, but uh, there's definitely some activity ramping up still around the Taupo Supervolcano. Again, nothing major, just a little uptick in earthquake activity. Uh, there's that movement across the Tonga and the Fiji area, and of course the uh, bouncing back and forth effect here between the Philippines and the deeper movement well to the southeast. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Middle America Trench showing a 4.0 and 4.4 there from yesterday. Although this 4.0 looks like it's a little bit closer to the Costa Rica area. Panama, excuse me, 10 kilometers deep coming in just a little bit ago. Um, so continue to watch that. And uh, of course the Turkey area. All seeing uh, a pretty good uptick in movement today. Mediterranean, relatively... Uh, about the same as it was yesterday, although a few more twos across the area. The Atlantic Ocean, fairly quiet. We did have one 3.4 here in Iceland. Looks like that coming in uh, around the uh, north side of Iceland, it looks like. Uh, but the rest of the region, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on across the Atlantic for now. A uh, quick glance here at Yellowstone National Park. Super Volcano shows, uh, let's see what we got. Not a whole lot. Um, really, <laughs> not a whole lot going on. A couple of small specks of an earthquake there, but uh, overall, seismic activity has been relatively calm across the area. All right, uh, space weather events here on space weather, or solarham.net, excuse me, uh, still shows uh, that we got numerous sunspots facing us, obviously here. Uh, quite a few. Our bad boy sunspot is no longer in view over here. Uh, that was the source of uh, many M flares over the last week or so. And we're left with um, not a whole lot of um, spectacular sunspots here. There's not a whole lot of uh, uh, potential as far as any major flaring goes. I still think, and I mentioned last night, that this region here about uh, around this area holds the best threat for any type of further flaring that at least is facing the Earth. We do have another sunspot developing out on the northeastern limb and down here on the southeastern limb as well. So uh, we'll keep an eye on those. And uh, right now, uh, let's see what we got for the solar storm department. Still kind of forecasting here over the next couple days, maybe up to a G1 class storm, four to five on the KP index. That means that aurora is possible at the higher latitudes right now. Very minimal though, uh, but keep an eye on that as conditions could remain unsettled here uh, over the next couple nights. All right, uh, weather activity. Of course, you know we have a lot of snow out here. We've had some major low elevation snow into the uh, California region recently, and that includes areas down in Southern California, but... Uh, and, and today you can see the blue on the map indicating some heavy snowfall on top of the massive amount that we've received. And that's all good and dandy, but we're looking at a potential setup here of some warmer storms coming in. Um, kind of similar to what we've seen back in 2016, 2017 when we had that uh, Oroville Dam crisis. Now, here is today's storm uh, right about here. We got some uh, lingering showers and rain in the valley, snow in the mountains, sticks around for a couple days or so. And then we got kind of a colliding source here of colder air from the northwest and some warmer, if you will, uh, precipitation coming in due uh, west here. And they're going to collide, bring in quite a bit of rainfall here into the Bay Area southward, also for us here in Northern California as well. 
still some blue up here on the map and that uh, kind of scoots out of the way and the warmer storm uh, comes in and starts to take over notice that there's not much blue out here that means uh precipitation at the higher levels melting some of that snow uh, and there's been a lot of it up there luckily for us here in the uh, in the uh, california region a lot of our reservoirs are still uh below <clears throat> you know we still have room to spare uh, to fill these things up but we're going to look at uh, maybe some pretty good snow melt coming from that storm system a lot of warm rain coming in not not like tropical but it's much warmer than the cold systems that we've been seeing here uh, this winter and of course that includes all the way down into southern california look at that that's why i'm saying watch these faults down here these guys have been getting quite a bit of rain and snow up and down the state and i have a feeling that's that could be a trigger uh, to some earthquake activity out there uh, in the near future uh, behind that storm another one comes in specifically aimed at southern california a lot of rainfall coming in for you folks behind that some more rain for the west coast and behind that i just it's like a broken record but i'm not going to complain we need the rain and we need the uh we need everything to refill the ground aquifers um we need to get out of this drought it's uh it's pretty uh it was a bad year last year uh, lost a couple trees out here some walnut trees due to the uh the dryness and also the hundred and it was almost 120 here in northern california last year so um with no water for the trees there at uh that 120 degree heat will kill things so let me bring up here real quick the accumulated total precipitation amount Okay, so this is just today. We're going to go all the way till about the 19th, where I showed you guys the 20th. And these are going to be rainfall <clears throat> uh, estimates, accumulated total precipitation from all the storms coming in. And this kind of reminds me of January, where we've seen all that flooding out here. The ground is still rather soaked. And, uh, you know, sometimes the top layer will dry out when we have a a sunny day or a couple sunny days but underneath underneath our feet it's wet all the way down and uh to put another oh it looks like maybe another four to six inches around the sacramento valley it looks like that's going to lead to uh, maybe some flooding concerns once again up into the sierra nevada now this is liquid precipitation amounts um, there'll be some snow at the higher elevations but regions that have not seen or, or that have a <clears throat> excuse me that are still see snow uh, or looking at a lot of this rainfall on top of that snow and that will melt it uh, so we're looking at maybe six inches or so on top of that uh, snow far as rainfall goes so look for some flooding for sure uh, coming up as we head into the middle of march and potentially towards the end of march as well this has definitely been quite a winter uh, for us here along the west coast all right folks i'm going to jump off here have yourself a good day it is uh it's sunday so you got monday coming around really quick again stay safe out there we will catch you guys very soon have a good one